Hello everyone. Welcome to the 11th lecture of the Web Information Systems course. In this section, we will talk about modern web search. And before we do that, let's look at the story so far on what are the other techniques we have already looked at. So, so far we have looked into some information retrieval methods. We just discussed that in the previous uh, module. And we've also talked about why that is important, why we cannot use uh, simple database access methods when we are talking about web data. The web contains both structured and unstructured information. And if we want to access relevant information, we need to know how to retrieve this data. And in doing so, we will understand a lot more on how the search engine works. So in this module, we look at the different aspects of a search engine. And in particular, we will look a little more into detail inside web crawlers as well as the way index web pages. So when we talk about web search engines, we know that they don't, these search engines don't just search the web, they search a copy of the web. And to do so, they use these crawlers. So web crawlers, they crawl from documents using the links to move from one document to another. Here we mean that the crawlers are trying to access information stored across multiple web servers. So whenever we use a keyword-based search, like in a Google search engine, it automatically formats the search for you to return relevant results. And using these different links which are provided in the web page, you can crawl from these different web pages from one to another. So while we are looking at the architecture of a search engine, let's look at Google search engine's architecture. When we see the, uh, the figure, one of the first things we look at is we see, first of all, that there are numerous crawlers because uh, we are looking, we are accessing these several million data web pages. And in order to do that, we need multiple crawlers. We, can, we have to use a distributed system. So we see that. And uh, this image was, is taken from the article published by the founders of Google, uh, Sergey Brin and Larry Page in Computer Networks and uh, ISDN Systems. And the link is provided below. So it will be a very good idea for you to uh, look at this uh, article and learn more about the Google search engine. We also see that there is this URL server. What that does then is it sends the list of URLs to be fetched through the crawler. So we will look at some of these elements in more detail. And before we do that, however, let's look at the web crawler and what are the challenges it has to face and how it works. Not surprisingly, running a web crawler is a challenging task. The, there are tricky performance and reliability issues. And even more importantly, there are social issues such as access permission that we have to deal with. So crawling is the most fragile application since it involves interacting with hundreds of thousands of web servers, which are all beyond the control of the system. So here we describe the simplified working of a web crawler. So the main idea is you start with known sites, you record the information for these sites in a structured format, and then you follow the links from each of these sites. You record the information now found at the new sites and you repeat. So you have, you're increasing this web across the internet to get access to relevant data. Of course, it's not as simple as it sounds. So there are challenges as, uh, associated with this. For example, speed. Not surprisingly, speed is a crucial factor for the successful performance of a search engine. To address this, just as we saw in the architecture of the Google search engine, we need a distributed system of crawlers to access all the possible web pages. 
divide the work between the crawlers. Then a hashing function determines which crawling machine is responsible for a particular URL. So if a crawling machine encounters a URL for which it is not responsible, it passes it on to the machine that is responsible for it. Another issue, of course, is politeness. Now, this involves taking precautions that a single web page does not get bombarded by so many requests that it gets overloaded. So in order to do that again, some protocols need to be followed to ensure that this does not happen. Then we talk about excluded content. So before we fetch a web page from a site, a crawler must fetch that site's robot.txt file to determine whether the webmaster has specified that some or all of the content should not be crawled. So in that case, if you cannot access it, then that needs to be excluded from the search. Another issue is spamming. So there is this terminology called cloaking, which is a search engine optimization technique in which the content presented to the search engine spied up is different from the one that is presented to the user's browser. This is done by delivering content based on the IP addresses or the user agent HTTP header of the user uh, requesting this page. So when a user is identified as a search engine spider, a server side script delivers a different version of the web page, one that contains content not present on the visible page or that is present but not searchable. The purpose of cloaking is sometimes to deceive search engines so that they display the page when it should not be otherwise displayed. This can artificially boost the importance of the web page and possibly lead to misleading results. So again, something it has to face for. Then there is continuous crawling. There needs to be a prioritizing of these web pages so that the most relevant ones are accessed first. This becomes even crucial for a query that is temporal in nature. For example, if we search current weather, the search engine needs to access the relevant websites first to provide the correct weather at the time of the query. So this is again an important issue for crawlers during continuous crawling. So we have already seen that there are several challenges in the crawler uh, functioning. And we've discussed the first one where the head and get requests sometimes return different headers. Another issue that it can face is that a page can redirect to itself. So there could be a cycle, which could also be a challenge for the crawler. And moreover, pages can require JavaScript processing. They can require cookies. And they can also be built in a non-HTML mind-like mind environment, which also makes access and uh, access of the web page difficult. The processing involved, again, let's look at uh, the Google search engine in specific. Just to give you an idea of what the processing involved looks like, in order to scale to hundreds of millions of web pages, Google has a fast distributed crawling system. No surprise there. So a single URL server serves lists of URLs to a number of crawlers. Now, each crawler keeps roughly 300 connections open at once. This is necessary to retrieve web pages at a fast enough pace. At peak speeds, the system can crawl over 100 web pages per second using four crawlers. So in this case, we are talking about roughly 600 kilo per second of data. So this is just to give you an idea of the processing that's involved. So now that we have been, we've accessed these URLs, given a set of keywords, how do we find these relevant documents? We've already looked at the inverted index in the previous lecture. So we are going to revisit that as well. So again, we need uh, 
the simplest, we've already looked at the simplest vector space model we discussed in class, where for each keyword, we assign the document that contains the word a binary value of 1 or 0 if absent. As we saw, this makes the matrix of keywords and documents extremely sparse. So we can take it one step forward and record the doc IDs or the document labels for the specific keyword. In the simplest case, for a specific word like noises, we could then have the list of all the doc IDs which contain the keyword noises. We can then add one more information, which is the position of the word in that document. So in that case, now we have the doc ID and then all the positions where this word occurred in that document. But even this is not enough for a relevant search a result. So we can make it even more detailed. So for modern search engines, we use even more detailed information about related to the position annotated in info, such as the whether the keyword is present in the heading or not, or if the font is boldface, which makes it more important. This makes it really useful for uh, ranking. Also, the latest uh, methodology used by Google, this was uh, pretty recent, launched in July 24th, 2014, the Pigeon Rank, which actually sorts the data using the spatial information so that the user, the local search results get a higher rank since they may be more relevant to the user. So again, this is just a continuous improvement process. And the more information you can put, the more detailed the ranking can be. So we can, again, we can, we've seen the, in Google's architecture that there are these barrels. So what these barrels do are that they contain these uh, databases, which are uh, storing these documents using the doc ID. They're created by the indexer and used by the sorter. So again, to give you an idea, the Google search engine uses 64 barrels which contain the word IDs and the number of documents that contain that word ID. So looking inside a barrel, you can see that there are these word IDs which have been sorted. Um, it could be in alphabetical order. And then there is the frequency, the number of documents which contain that word ID. And then within that, there is even more information stored for each of these documents then, the number of hits, as well as the position information is then stored. And this is just for one of the barrels, so it's repeated across all these 64 barrels. So how does a search engine boost its speed to make this indexing faster? Well, one is, of course, the scale-up. We already looked at these barrels or databases. Another way is by creating sublists within these lists of words. For example, now electrical is a union since of the set of all the terms containing the word electrical, such as say electrical apparatus or electrical current. So you can use, uh, share or return all the uh, responses for the word electrical that contain these both terms for electrical apparatus as well as electrical current. So using this makes it a lot faster. Using information about the anchor text also provides more information about the web page that can be useful for indexing. The anchor text provides more information about the target link so that if there are multiple anchor texts pointing to the same target using the same keywords, then there is this strong signal about the information content of the web page. This can provide a summary about the linked as an example out here, there is this anchor text leading to my web page. And you can also access some more. These are not the only indexing tricks. There are several more. So 
so it would all also be a great idea for you to look at the references that are provided here so you can read more on all the methods that are used by these search engines to improve or boost their indexing speed page ranking so this the word the term page rank was coined after google co-founder larry page and page rank works by counting the number and quality of links to a page to determine a rough estimate of how important the website is so the underlying assumption is that the more important websites are likely to receive more links from other websites and in order to do that again specifically for google every hit list now contains the position font and capitalization information also they used the anchor text as well as the page rank of the document combining all this information for uh, to give out the single ranked value is difficult so then they also had to factor in the fact that no particular factor should have too much influence so it needs to be balanced so now that we have indexed these documents let's uh, talk a little bit more on the user side the uh, about the query processing so by default current search engines return only documents containing all the query keywords to achieve this a simple query processor looks up each query term in the term di dictionary and locates its posting list so the processor simultaneously scans the posting list from all the terms to find documents in common it stops once it has find found out the required number of matching documents or if it's at the end of the list so we can also improve the search quality by incorporating more factors into the um uh, page ranking algorithm but this would make the query even slower so in order to make this speed up this query processing there are numerous ways uh one is the clever numbering of the search documents so that you do it in the decreasing order of importance to the query the current query again we've looked at an example of this in the information retrieval class in cla uh, during the previous class period the other is caching so the normal query processor also uses caching to reduce the cost of accessing commonly needed parts of the term dictionaries and inverted files so again this makes it a lot faster other than that there are numerous other aspects involved in building a search engine for example query specific advertisement i'm sure you've seen that when you google a specific query there are these list of very specific ads that pop out so there is of course some algorithm running out there then of course there is image video audio search so what the methods used for that are a lot trickier because you have to use some image features to be able to find out these the common images or to find out more relevant images to your query and but the takeaway from all this is that there are many challenges to building a search engine but there's continuous room for improvement as we see google continuously keeps making updates to their search algorithms to make it better and better so there is a lot of research potential for this field and we'll again discuss some more key features in class uh so thank you for your time